Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I'm here with just a little preview for the battle card uh, Kickstarter this week that is basically some nice little print and plays from David Thompson and Nils Johansson. These are very, very cheap. You get like a little pack of several games for like five bucks or something. And um, I just want to show you what they actually look like. So this is probably the most simple of the games. So this one is the Malayan campaign, and this is, you basically literally can print out one or two sheets of paper. Here's the game. And then here are the rules. So I'm actually just going to talk you through what you do for this particular game. Then I'll show you one more so you can see two of the games in the pack. And then the others are uh, still secret, even for me. Although I guess I could beg. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, basically what's going on is this this game is in particular is meant to illustrate um, how during the Malayan campaign, Japanese forces really, really had the advantage. And we as the allied forces need to get out of dodge. It's going to be tough. Uh, the Japanese are very strong and we are not. And uh, we, we are on the run. So basically the goal of this scenario is we are trying to get to Singapore. So we win if an allied unit of strength three or higher withdraws to the Singapore space. So we've got to get somebody down here with a value of three on their die. But as you can see, that's not very promising. We The highest here is a four, and we have like a whole bunch of twos. So just so you know, setup is actually super nice because it tells you. So you're supposed to put a six on that spot for the Japanese die. There's two under here. So basically everything that you actually need is printed on the card, which is super nice. But basically, here's the Japanese, here are the allies, and we are in trouble. Uh, so <laughs> um, the way this is going to work is on each turn at the start, you can choose if you want to withdraw an allied unit that's at the same location as a Japanese unit. So they have two different tracks. The spaces with the hatch marks are Japanese spaces, and the ones without are allied spaces. But these are... Um, considered the same place so right now uh we and the japanese are both in jitra and kotabaru so i have to decide do i want to withdraw one of these dice and so ooh, i think i will do that and the reason for that is that i don't want to get in a fight with the japanese here and kind of like reduce their abilities but then have them pump up their reinforcements right here so see the two on this space that means that the japanese are going to get reinforcements when they come here and so maybe i don't want to just get into a pointless fight that they then recover from. So I already know my odds are bad and that not too much is going to happen to the Japanese in our fighting, because if you look at this chart, I can't do more than two damage to them, even in the very best situation. Uh, so yeah, maybe we just need to get out of here. So what's going to happen is that this die is basically going to reduce by one to three, and then we're going to add it to this two here. So I'm just going to remove this die actually and make this one a five. All right, so we've withdrawn. So when you withdraw, you lose a little bit of strength, and then you uh, move towards Singapore, and then you take the sum of the dice that have met in the new location. Then we're going to have a Japanese advance. So this location doesn't have an allied unit at it anymore, so the Japanese die is going to advance here to Kampar. So we're going to get into it. It's just a matter of trying to be a little bit stronger when we do. Um, whenever the Japanese move into a space that has one of these numbers, they gain reinforcements, and that is definitely not something that we want. So the details about reinforcements are here. And basically these two different Japanese dice are going to move along these two different pathways. They're not, they're not going to cross or anything. It's a very, very straightforward game. Now we're going to battle. Uh, and now I can choose to counterattack or defend with each allied unit in the same location as a Japanese unit. So this is something to think about. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is compare our strength. So here I have a 6 to 5. Here I have a 6 to 2. This is considered a critical advantage uh, because the Japanese numbers are literally three times higher than mine. So that's tough. So here are my options. i got two charts down here. There's counterattack, uh, and that means that I can maybe get a little bit of damage in, but I also have the potential to lose more. Uh, and then here's just defending where I can just let the Japanese continue to steamroll a little bit, but hope that you know I can hold out. So either way, this dude is basically doomed. As you can see, we've got a Japanese super advantage. No matter what the role is, we're going to lose at least two. So for this guy, we're definitely going to counterattack and just at least hope to do something, you know. Uh, and then over here, the situation is a little bit different because the Japanese have an advantage, but it's not as big. So here I can either try to do a little bit of damage, but risk losing a bit more. Or I can defend and have slightly lower losses. So I think what I might do here is defend and keep retreating and just see what I can do with that. But we'll we'll see 
if that was a good idea or not. I mean, you know, of course the dice can curse you too. So <laughs> um, let's do this battle first. So let's go ahead and roll this die. Oh, a six. That's actually really good. Okay. So we defended and we're just going to go to four. That could have been so much worse. Uh, maybe we should have just attacked. Maybe we could have taken them down by one zero, but it's too late now. All right. And then here, um, this is going to be a counterattack because we know that we're doomed anyway. Uh, and so we, let's just call it a five. Um, so that means that we get to take three off of ourselves. So we're dead. But they also went down by two, which is kind of nice. You know, it's, it's something. So we did our battle. And uh, now we're going to do allied air support. So if an allied unit is in Quantan, which we do have one here, uh, we're going to subtract one strength from one Japanese unit. So what I want to do is I want to reduce this one. Because this is the unit that has the better chance of making it back. And so I'm just trying to kind of keep us on an even keel until we can make it back to Singapore. Because this is not about winning. This is about surviving. Um, <laughs> I do think that they're going to add a win condition where maybe you could try to defeat one of the Japanese units up here. But I just don't see... My, the dice don't let me enough for that. Alright. So now we're back to the beginning. Let's advance the turn counter. Boom. And uh, we can't go beyond turn six. We're doing okay right now. But we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, do I want to withdraw? Yes. Yes, I want to withdraw. But I'm going to hang out here because, again, I want to see if I can just survive with one more round of air support. That would be really great if I can, if I can swing it. So, although, sadly, I don't think I'm going to be able to get any more air support because I'm going to get wrecked during the battle phase here. But we'll do our best. All right, so let's definitely withdraw this guy. So, again, it's going to go down to three, but added to two. We're going to end up with five. And then this Japanese unit is going to move down, but there's no reinforcement number. So they're just going to stay at five. So we're even Steven right now. Ooh. Uh, and then this Japanese unit is going to come down to Kwantan, and they're going to gain one based on the reinforcement number on here. So the good news for us here is that we actually might make it through one more turn if we sit here and hunker down. Um, because we're no longer at a super advantage for the Japanese. So basically the Japanese have a three to one strength ratio or higher than they have decisive advantage. That's Japan plus. Uh, fortunately, we don't have that right now. So if we roll okay, we can actually survive one more turn and get another turn of air support, which would be really good. So we are going to defend on both fronts and hope for the best. So let's start here. Come on, die. Oh, that sucked. Okay. Um, well, we're just going to lose one. So it could be worse. I'll take it. And then let's roll here. All right, a two. Still bad, but still just a minus one. So this die actually lived long enough to, uh, to get us another air support, which is awesome. So the battles are done. Uh, now we're gonna do allied air support so we can take one more strength from a Japanese unit. Let's do this one. So we're just whittling this guy down so that this one can retreat is the, the goal here. Uh, and now we'll advance the turn marker. Then we're going to make decisions again. So do we want to withdraw? Yes. Let's, so let's withdraw this die. So this will go down to three, up to five. Uh, and then this die will advance. And they're going to gain one reinforcement. And this die is just going to shot right here because they have work to do, which is destroy this poor, poor soul here uh, at the airfield. It did not go well. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's do our little battles let's do this one first like please your god let this one just go okay get us out of here all right so we rolled a two i should say by the way i intended to defend um because i'm just trying to keep my numbers up we are not interested in fighting these guys so it'll put us down to a four these guys stay the same Ugh. Uh, but we are going to make it singapore at this point which is really good so we're going to roll here for this battle wrecked just done that was tough and the japanese definitely had decisive advantage they were three to one um so they let's say that we valiantly counterattacked there i should have declared that beforehand not that it really matters um but they would have lost like one like oh no for them um <laughs> we get no allied air support anymore because the airfield is now no longer occupied by allies at all uh we'll advance the turn marker but then these boys are going to make it 
to Singapore. So we win the game, but this poor Dai, they're still left out here. Like, you know, they're just going to get crunched up by the Japanese horses because they just do not have it. So this is definitely the simplest of the little uh, battle card games. Um, I've shown this one off. I'm going to do a different video showing off the Moro River one. Uh, just that so there's two different videos. You don't have to feel like you sit. And you don't feel like you have to sit through like a whole bunch. But um, this is basically just a fun little print and play project. It's meant to be really quick. It's meant to be really simple. As you can see, it has been uh, even before editing. It took me less than 15 minutes to do this, which I think is actually pretty nice. So uh, if this looks like something that you're interested in, I'll have the uh, link to the campaign in the show notes and you can go check it out. But really, it's such a good deal if you don't mind a little print and play because it's like four games for $5. Uh, there's really nothing to complain about like i would say that this particular game is not the most interesting because it's the one that's the most on rails of the set but it's amusing and for that price i mean might as well give it a shot uh, i actually see a lot of potential in these games to be educational uh makes me wonder like the, the really pr i think the point of this game from talking to david is to show you in a really quick way why this campaign was doomed and why there's just no way that it's going to work out and um at least not in any sort of traditional victory sense. And so I actually wonder if you could adapt this for Roman battles and use them to kind of illustrate some famous battles from ancient history. And so that's something that's been on my mind since I played this. Uh, but anyway, for now, if you want to learn about these cool World War II battles on cool little battle cards, uh, here you go. And I'll have a twin video to this to illustrate one more of them. Thank you so much for watching and happy gaming.